Hello, welcome back to the next video here in our, our series, our introduction to the IDFTPH tool. I'm Ed May, uh, glad to have you back with us. We're going to pick up where we left off in our last couple of videos. We've been talking about fresh air ventilation systems. And um, in this video, I want to take a few minutes and just talk about how we can reconcile our ventilation schedules here that we've applied in our using our sort of PHPP method to the Energy Plus document, so we, we or the Energy Plus model. So we were we were looking in the last video at the sort of difference in the way that the uh, schedules are applied and how we can override the Energy Plus standard schedules that Honeybee is going to uh, apply um, um, by default, so that we can apply our, our residential schedules. And that's fine. Everything is flowing through into our PHPP properly. But remember, one of the goals for the IDF to PH uh, tool is to have a matching Energy Plus and PHPP when you're all done. So what I'd like to do now is make sure that our Energy Plus model is going to match the loads and schedules and uh, timing and ventilation flow rates that we are using in our, our PHPP. So if we're trying to use the two models sort of in parallel with one another, I think it can be, I think it is helpful to have them match. Now they don't have to, obviously. And if you don't want them to, for some reason, you can certainly sort of skip this part. But um, I, I like to have them match. I think they're most useful in that in that manner. And so what we're going to do is we're going to override the really, really sophisticated, highly detailed Energy Plus schedules with the simpler ternary schedule of our PHPP. So we're going to override the really sophisticated, in-depth schedules um, and we're going to override them with a simpler constant schedule uh, that's going to match more closely the dynamic that we see happening in the PHPP energy model. And again, the whole point there is to just have um, coordination and alignment between the two tools. Um, and, and you can choose to you can choose to have them diverge uh, if you so choose, but to do that knowingly. I want to at least give you the, the the tools to show you how to get them to align if if you if you wanted to. So it's relatively straightforward. We're going to use some standard Honeybee tools for this. We don't have to use any new IDF to pH tools. We're just going to use some standard Honeybee tools uh, for this operation. So before we do that, let's take a look at what our IDF file looks like at this point. So at this point, what does our IDF file look like? Let me open up my file viewer. Uh, and we'll go to C. I'm going to go to IDF to PH example. That's where our working directory, where we have been saving all of our information here. And I'm going to go into Energy Plus, Open Studio, Energy Plus, Model to IDF. And here is my IDF file. So I'm going to right click and open this up with my EP launch application, uh, which is what we uh, use to sort of investigate or take a look at our Energy Plus, or it's one method of taking a look at it and investigating our Energy Plus files. I'll hit Control L to filter my selection here to only the used objects. And remember, the IDF is just a description. It's just a, a text description of our building. So it's got all the information that the Energy Plus simulation engine is going to use when it actually goes off and does the simulation. But right now, it's just a blueprint. It's just a description. So we're interested in the ventilation system. So how is the ventilation system configured? Well, I'm going to scroll down a little bit and let's see if we can find, there we go, design specification outdoor air. So design specification outdoor air. Notice we have one object and it is the outdoor, the example zone. So that's the name of our, our, known, our zone, um, outdoor air. And what do we have? We have an outdoor air flow per person, cubic meters per second per person. So this tiny little number. We have an outdoor airflow per floor area, so per square meter of floor area. And then we have the option to put in some other um, airflows. Those are zeroed out. So the, the way that the honeybee works by default is going to apply uh, an airflow per person and then an airflow per square meter of floor area. And remember, if we want to figure out how many people there are, so how many how many people are in the space, we would have to figure out what our, our occupancy load is. So we would say, well, there's this many people per square meter at maximum. And then we would have to go find the schedule that describes when, how, what is the percentage of maximum um, number of people in the space, and which is going to go up and down over the course of the day and the week. And you'll have lower occupancy on Sunday if it's an office, all of this kind of stuff. 
Uh, so okay, fine. Um, let's go back to our. Let me go back to our design specification. So so 0.23. Uh, or 0 0.0023 and 0 0.0003, uh, those are going to be our values for our, our outdoor airflow. Okay, so if we go back to our grasshopper scene now, well, how do those match up to these numbers right here? Well, it's a little hard to tell. It's a little hard to do, to do that math, but um, we can say with certainty that these numbers uh, are very different. Are, are, are quite a bit different. Uh, and you can remember that when we were allowing the energy plus model to determine the flow rates, so if I come in here and I just reset my, my flag instead of user determined, say use the energy plus flow rates, notice that these values are much, much higher. Okay, so these office values are much, much higher than the, the residential values that I'm overriding them with. So let me set this back to user determined. And this will go back to the flow rates that it's pulling from our, our Rhino scene there. So somehow I need to get these flow rates into the Energy Plus model. So I want to override the Energy Plus model with these flow rates. So we can do that relatively straightforwardly here in the grasshopper scene. So I'm going to open up a little bit more room after my room flow rates, my room ventilation flow rates component. We can give ourselves a little bit more room here. And we're going to use just a couple of stock honeybee components. Notice that some of the outputs from the room ventilation flow rates are ventilation per area and ventilation per person. Well, that matches our idea for our Energy Plus inputs um, quite nicely. So we can come up to our uh, Honeybee tools. So go to our Honeybee tools, and if we go to, where is it? Oh yeah, uh, set Energy Plus zone loads, and then we'll also need set Energy Plus zone schedules in a second. But for now, let's just set these loads. Right. What we're trying to do is reset the ventilation loads. We're right, trying to reset the ventilation error per person and the ventilation error per area. So let me zoom in here a little bit. And what you'll find is these guys are going to kind of align with one another. So we've got ventilation per area, ventilation per area, ventilation per person, ventilation per person. So I'm just going to hook these up and connect these one to the other. This is also another of these pass-through components. So it's going to take in honeybee zones and kick out honeybee zones. So if I input the honeybee zone here, I now have the ability to output the honeybee zone. So I'm going to pass this along to the next item in the chain there. So notice nothing changed in our, nothing changed here in our, our, uh, our PHPP. So what changed when we added this? When we added this element here, let's go back to our let's go back to our um, our EP launch editor and let's uh, take a look at that IDF again. So I'll say Control L. So I reloaded the IDF. I'll come down here to the design specification outdoor air and notice these numbers are now very different. Excuse me, these numbers are very different, right? The outdoor air uh, per floor area and the outdoor air per person are now very different values. These have been reset. These have been overridden by this component. So this component has figured out the right numbers to use based on the values that you set back in the Rhino scene. So based on this number and the size of the room, etc., it's going to figure out the right number to pass along in this chain. Now, one other sort of um, element that we need to keep in mind here is that we also need to reset the schedules that Energy Plus is using. So not only do we have to reset the loads, but we do have to reset the schedules as well. Um, and the reason we have to do that is because the way that the PHPP is going to calculate its energy consumption is that it's going gonna, it's gonna to take all of this information and sort of combine it together into a constant flow rate. So even though we are saying, oh, the, the flow goes up and down, the PHPP is actually going to combine all of this together into a single constant flow rate, which is going to what it's going to apply for the entire season. So it's going to do it seasonally, once for the winter, once for the summertime. So we need to override the Energy Plus schedules with a constant schedule. And we can do that using the basic Honeybee tools as well. So I'm going to uh, come in here. And so we have our, our, our zone loads setter. I'll come back up to 08 and I'll get my uh, 
zone schedule setter, and I'll drop that onto the canvas here as well. This is another pass-through component. So it takes the honeybee zones, and then it kicks out the honeybee zones. Now we haven't done anything, so it's all still same same for the for the moment here. Um, da, 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 da. Ugh, did this get? Let me check that this didn't. Yep. Yeah. Go to manual. There we go. All right, so we've got our okay, so we've got our our schedule here, so that's fine. We haven't um, we haven't done anything with it. We haven't overridden any of the schedules yet. The schedule that we want to override, the schedule that we want to reset and turn from a variable schedule into a constant schedule, is the bottom one here, our ventilation schedule. So I want to override the ventilation schedule with what's known as a constant schedule. I just want this to run at a constant rate all season long. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to use some um, honeybee components again. I'm going to come up here to the schedule um, rollout, and I'm going to find, there we go, honeybee constant schedule. So the honeybee constant schedule, we need to set a couple things here. We'll give it a name. So let's call this, um, we'll call this um, PHPP uh, event schedule. Well, I guess we'll call it constant schedule. That'll be more descriptive. So we'll give that the name. And I just want this to be running at 100% or 1 all the time. It's a, it's a constant, always on uh, schedule. That's the way the PHPP is going to approach your, your ventilation rate there. So now we have a schedule coming out. There's our PHPP ventilation constant schedule. I'm going to take this schedule and I'm going to apply it to the ventilation schedule here. And you'll see this will run for a second. And this is passing through. That's passing through. This is all working correctly. Good. So now this has been reset. So let me go to our let me go back to our IDF and let's take a look. This has been updated, so I need to I need to reopen it. Uh, da -da. Say edit. Come on. There we go. Control L to filter. I'll come down here to my design specification outdoor air. So these numbers are the same, but notice that my outdoor air schedule name has been set to PHPP ventilation constant schedule. So if I was to come up here to schedules constant, I would find a couple different options here. And where's the one that I want? That, that, that one. I guess it's in here. There it is. There's our PHPP ventilation constant schedule, 24 hours a day, all day, every day. Now, this is not as what do you want to what do you want to call it? Realistic as as accurate, I guess, um, as the as the detailed variable um, out of the box schedules that you can find in Energy Plus, right? The 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 reality is that the ventilation flow rates are going to go up and down over the course of the over over the course of a day. And certainly, if this was a non residential application, this would not be very accurate at all. But so that we can get good alignment between the Energy Plus and the PHPP, if that's what we want, and we often do, this is the way that we can override the Energy Plus out of the box. Um, sort of um, operation and make it work more like the PHPP. So again, the PHPP is going to apply a constant schedule uh, to the entire season. And so we kind of want to mimic that in the energy, or maybe we kind of want to mimic that in our energy plus. So this would be the way that you would do that um, if, if you did want to do that. So let me clean up a little bit here. Uh, if you wanted to do that, if you wanted your Energy Plus and your PHPP to sort of um, align with one another, you want to get very similar results from them both, um, this would be an important step in that, in step in that sequence. Right? As I've said a few times, the Energy Plus and the idea and the um, PHPP are quite different than one another, um, but we can make them match one another pretty, pretty darn closely. Um, and so again, this is one, one important step in the, in the sequence there. So again, what did we do? We calculated our flow rates based on the user input. So rather than the Energy Plus schedule, we gave explicit room by room flow rate information. We calculated the equivalent uh, uh, ventilation flow rates. We overrode the standard Energy Plus loads for ventilation. And then we overrode the variable schedule 
with a constant schedule so that, again, it more closely matched the way the PHPP is working. So hopefully that all made sense. Hopefully uh, that's clear. Hopefully your IDF and your PHPP are all still working as well. Um, in the next video, we will come back and we're going to take a look at the last bit of the last bit of our discussion here of ventilation. We have to talk about uh, air tightness of the envelope, uh, and we'll we'll again sort of see how we can reconcile the uh, standard Energy Plus method or or. Um, uh, process with our PHPP, see if we can't get them to align with one another, and we'll look at some tools that we can use um, to, to uh, set our, our air tightness levels. Obviously, if we're doing pass-pass buildings, the air tightness is going to be super important. So we'll take a look at that when we come back in the next video. We'll cut this one off here, and um, I'll see you back for the, the, the next session.